And that was our famous last word, Shanice. And I love your smile. You did so well to get it. So many people got it right. And he says, Lady V, I have started writing a sort of sequel to The Persuaders to bring it up to date. It's more of a next generation with the offspring of the original characters. Well, they've got the charisma and pizzazz of the originals. It'll be utterly irresistible, Andy. Looking forward to hearing or seeing about it. Maria from Hampshire says, lovely show, Vanessa. Thank you, Maria. Very kind of you. I listen as often as I can when getting ready for work or getting up with my two-year-old. Can I please say hello to all staff and patients at Frimley Park Hospital, where I'm currently on placement as a student nurse. You bet you can, Maria. Uh, And this says, hope you're well. Could you please say happy birthday to my dad, Mr. Frank David? Frank will be out for work soon, up bright and early, working as an HGV driver. Currently, we're living in Abu Dhabi and miss him terribly. We'll be raising a glass tonight over the sea, celebrating across the miles. He loves listening to your show. uh, And I know this will make his day and put a huge smile on his face. We love you, Dad. And this is with oodles of love from Lucy, William and your grandson, Monty, who's also known as Babu. And that comes especially from Lucy Bishop to her dad, Mr. Frank David. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. We're the BBC News at six o'clock on Tuesday, the 5th of July. This is Jason Kay. Good morning. Police in the US have arrested a man suspected of opening fire on an Independence Day parade, killing six people. The Prime Minister is facing new questions surrounding what he knew about Chris Pincher's behaviour when he gave the MP a government job and how sand is being used to store green energy. US police have arrested a man they believe killed six people at an Independence Day parade near Chicago. 24 other people were hurt as the gunman opened fire from a rooftop. The suspect had been named as 22-year-old Robert Cremo III. This eyewitness says there was panic when the shooting began. I thought that it was the Navy that was saluting the flag with the rifles, but then when I saw people running, I picked up my son and started running of uh, the local shops there and I tried to break the glass to get in with my son and I couldn't break it and when uh, the shot stopped again is when we started we decided we had to run so we started shooting again and we ran behind the building and I put my my son in a dumpster. Boris Johnson's decision to bring Chris Pincher back into government is facing further scrutiny after the merge the Prime Minister was made aware of a formal complaint about the MP's behaviour when he was a Foreign Office Minister more than two years earlier. In the latest statement addressing what Mr Johnson knew before he appointed Mr Pincher as Deputy Chief Whip, Downing Street has said he told uh, he was told about media reports and some allegations that were either resolved or didn't progress to a formal complaint. Mr Pincher resigned from the Whip's office last Thursday and was suspended from the Conservative Party a day later after being accused of groping two men. Our political correspondent, Ione Wells, reports. This claim raises fresh questions as to what the Prime Minister knew about Chris Pincher's conduct before he was appointed Deputy Chief Whip in February this year. The BBC can reveal that Boris Johnson was made aware of a complaint raised about allegedly inappropriate behaviour while Mr Pincher was a Foreign Office Minister from 2019 to 2020. The complaint triggered a disciplinary process run by Cabinet Office officials, but senior members of the government, including the Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary, were informed. It resulted in a report confirming his misconduct. Mr Pincher has been approached for comment. A BBC investigation into the care system in Wales has found that children as young as 11 have been housed in Airbnbs or other temporary accommodation. Local authorities insist the placements are are a last resort and say that social workers are available around the clock. Children's charities are warning that young people in care are not getting the support they need. Oxford University will launch a Pandemic Sciences Institute today aimed at combating the risks posed by infectious diseases. It hopes to learn lessons from Covid to improve and accelerate the response to possible future threats. Here's our medical editor, Fergus Walsh. The Pandemic Sciences Institute aims to help prevent a future disease outbreak from wreaking the same havoc. It will bring together Oxford's own scientists, including the team that created a COVID vaccine, and build on partnerships with global researchers, industry and government. Last year, G7 leaders backed an ambitious plan to develop vaccines, medicines and diagnostics within 100 days of a pandemic threat being detected. The Oxford team say that will only be possible if there is funding and global cooperation. 
The NHS is to start using drones to transport chemotherapy drugs from a pharmacy in Portsmouth to a hospital on the Isle of Wight. The technology is expected to cut delivery times from four hours to 30 minutes. The move is part of a trial scheme to assess the use of drones in the health service. Researchers in Finland have installed the world's first fully working sand battery, which can store solar and wind power for months at a time. The device contains 100 tonnes of low-grade sand, which stores heat at around 500 Celsius and can be used to warm homes in winter when energy is more expensive. Marku Ilonen from the developer's Polar Night Energy says it could solve the problem of year-round supply for green energy. More and more we have huge amounts of green electricity available that can be put to nowhere. So we need storage solutions and these kind of like massive heat storages allows to take the, the huge quantity in, convert it to something useful and, and, and be able to store it for a long time and then use it to replace combustion in the industry or in the district heating networks. And the weather, cloud with a few spots of rain in Northern Ireland, variable cloud with light showers across southern Britain, with rain moving into West Scotland later. It should be dry and bright elsewhere. Temperatures reaching 23 Celsius in London, 20 in Cardiff, 18 in Edinburgh and 17 in Belfast. And that's the BBC News at five past six. Now, Vanessa Phelps. Salutations, it is Tuesday. Welcome to the programme. Stand by for a gorgeous new word of the day and an utterly charming jolly good fellow. Good morning.